Hi there, it's uh, Dr. Mashoud uh, with one more video for the uh, YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the update on the ATLS, which is the Advanced Trauma Life Support uh, Tent Edition. Um, the reason being that what we're seeing in the practice these days is in spite of the fact that the Tent Edition of the ATLS it came up in January 2017, but the physicians are still making those same errors and probably following the old ATLS um, guidance. There are four or five uh, main things which the ATLS 10 edition has mentioned which are not there in the previous editions. The first and foremost is the, um, the importance of needle thoracostomy. Now what we historically know that if we suspect a tension pneumothorax in a traumatic patient so as per the previous ATLS guidance up till the ninth edition, we used to perform needle thoracostomies in the second intercostal space in the mid-clavicular line. Now that's still valid for pediatric populations, but in adults, uh, there's no more recommendation from the ATLS to do needle thoracostomy in the second intercostal space. Instead, what the ATLS tenth edition now advocates is to do needle thoracostomy at the level of the fourth or fifth intercostal space slightly anterior to the mid clavicular line just at the same landmark where you want to put an open chest vein in so for adults the needle thoracostomy has moved from the second intercostal space to the fourth or fifth intercostal space slightly anterior to the mid clavicular line however for pediatric population or pediatric trauma patients, the needle thoracostomy is still being performed in the second intercostal space mid-clavicular line. So this is a big change from historically where needle thoracostomy used to be done based on ATLS guidance. The second most important thing which the 10th edition now advocates is the initial fluid resuscitation in a traumatic patient. So up till the 9th edition, the ATLS used to say to give up to one to two, between one to two liters of crystalloids, ideally warm uh, crystalloids IV for patient who you suspect might be bleeding. But that has changed now. But the, what the 10th edition advocates or mentions is to give up to one liter of crystalloids instead of two liters. The guidance is to give up to one liter of IV warm crystalloids. And even though it mentions about giving up to one liter, even more important is the fact that it needs to be a very cautious amount of fluid administration initially of one liter of crystalloid. So you don't, you can't just give a bolus of one liter straight away in a few minutes. So you need to give small boluses of maybe 250 mils up to 500 mils and then reassess the parameters where the patient has responded or not. But you can give up to one liter. So this is the main point what we've seen in the medical practice still in trauma centers around the uh, country. What we're seeing is the patients, the physicians or the clinicians are still uh, going for the two liters initially, whereas the 10th edition clearly advocates to give up to one liter of crystalloid. The third thing which is important in the 10th edition is the use of transemic acid. Previously, the ATLS did not use to mention about use of IV transemic acid, uh, but now the 10th edition says if you suspect somebody's bleeding, you should give uh, one gram of transemic acid IV as a bolus. Now, this is coming back on the backdrop of the research or the evidence which was done in CRASH 2 study um, in 2012, which was published in Lancet. Um, so now, uh, the advocation is to give one gram of transemic acid. The fourth most important thing in the 10th edition of ATLS is the use of a trauma team approach. Previously, ATLS used to be known uh, as a course where you get taught uh, how to manage a patient solely, a trauma patient, how to manage the patient on your own. But now ATLS moved forward and it's advocating a trauma team based approach to approach a very sick trauma patient. So this is a big paradigm shift from the previous ATLS courses or editions. The fifth most important thing that there is a mention of emergency thoracotomy in patients 
especially with penetrating injuries. Now, there is evidence that emergency thoracotomies are still being done for blunt traumas, but the most advocation is for penetrating trauma. So just to summarize five most important things which the ATLS 10th edition had mentioned. First one is the, the place or the site of needle, needle thoracostomy, especially in adult patients. It's moved from second intercostal space, mid-clavicular line, to the fourth or fifth intercostal space, slightly anterior to the mid-axillary line. The second one is um, the initial fluid resuscitation. It should be up to one liter of warm crystalloid, cautious approach. The third one is the use of transemic acid, IV, one gram, initially as a bolus, if you suspect somebody is bleeding or they are in hypovolemic shock. The fourth important thing is the trauma team-based approach with which the 10th edition is advocating. And the last but not least is the use of emergency thoracotomy, especially in penetrating injuries. All these five points warrants a separate video and we will be um, making separate videos for all of these five important points because I think these make the basis of trauma care these days all around the world. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.